Fox 5 and Hot 97 present Street Soldiers with Lisa Evers. I'm so glad you're joining us for this episode of Street Soldiers on female fitness and body image. From special diets to surgery and gym memberships to workout equipment, billions of dollars are spent by women every year to get the body of their dreams. But to achieve lasting success, you may be surprised that your own self-image plays a major role and it doesn't cost anything. Triple Grammy Award winner Lizzo became the champion of girls and women everywhere with her body positivity movement that advocated for self-acceptance and self-love for big women, often called fat in society. Now she's concerned it's being co-opted by small and medium-sized women, and she's not happy about it. Yes, please be positive about your body. Please use our movement to empower yourself. That's the point. But the people who created this movement, big women, big Brown and black women, queer women, are not benefiting from the mainstream success of it. When it comes to your self-image, comparisons can be especially detrimental to your mental health, says Dr. Jesse Warner Cohen. Trying to get back to a place that they were at a different time of their life or to other people um, in their life. So looking at how what they believe their friends are like or celebrities, um, and it creates an unrealistic standard for ourselves. Christine Heronic started Gage Girl Training to help women find healthy and realistic ways to eat and workout routines that get results and are sustainable. She says water is essential, not just for hydration, but also for burning fat. But the real ingredient for success starts in the mind with consistency. It's absolutely everything because it doesn't matter how great you could stick to a plan for seven days, 14 days, 21 days. This is your life. <laughs> this is your life. It is not a race. I, I, that's why it's so important to look at this like reestablishing your new normal. The Hollywood trainer Jeanette Jenkins helps A-list celebrities and private clients achieve the best body of their lives and be at peace and pleased with how they look. She says those who succeed at this all possess certain characteristics in addition to the physical training. People who tend to love their bodies also usually have a positive mindset and they understand that having that positive approach to everything they do, to their work, to their perspective in life, and to how they view themselves makes a huge difference. So how do we get to that place of a body we love for the life we're living? Let's find out what our panel has to say. Joining me for this conversation, Dr. Jessie Warner Cohen. She's a senior psychologist at Northwell Health. Jessie, thank you so much for being with us. Thanks for having me. Thank you so much. Also joining us is Christine Heronic. She's a food scientist and nutrition expert. I'm sure we all have questions and concerns for her. Christine, thank you so much for being with us. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank you so much. Also joining us is, is Jeanette Jenkins. She's the Hollywood trainer. You can find her on hollywoodtrainer.com. She's got a lot of tips and been through a lot herself too. And we're going to find out all about that. Jeanette, thank you so much for being with us. Thank you for having me. We, we, appreciate, we appreciate it. Jeanette, I want to start with you because we see a lot of Hollywood stars. We see a lot of celebrities go through these body image issues. We saw um, you know, we saw one of the Kardashians go through a big issue. She was upset about a picture when she'd been working so hard on her body. We saw, we've seen Lizzo just say, this is who I am. I love it. I embrace it. What is the mood like among the celebrities and the people that you train in terms of what kind of bodies they want? Are there more acceptable variations now, or is everyone pretty much going for the same thing? You know, one of the beautiful things of social media is the fact that you have all these different body types and people and experts who are giving out information. Whereas in the past, we used to just have these big media conglomerates that would be in control of distributing content. But now there's so much incredible content out there that you really can choose where you want to receive your content and information from. And of course, your information is only as valuable as the source. So when it comes to actual climate of body types in Hollywood, it really is individual. I train very strong people mentally and physically like Pink, Alicia Keys, and um, you know, Journey Smollett. And it, one thing that I always try to gift to my clientele is a few things. The first is for them to understand that they have a genetic makeup and we can't change our genetic makeup. I often try to use like Serena Williams and Venus Williams as an example. They're two sisters from the exact same parents with completely different body types. We have to learn, first of all, you would be completely miserable if you lived your life hating your 
genetic makeup. Right. Because you're not going to change your genetic makeup. So right from the back, you got to go out the gate loving your genetic makeup. And then you train your body so that you can function at your absolute best at whatever genetic makeup that is. So I don't really change. I don't ever train a client with the mindset to change their body type. I train them with the concept to improve their muscular strength, their muscular endurance, their flexibility, their cardiovascular endurance, and to um, enjoy the feeling of what it is to be in optimal health. That they're to really feel good, which is all, which is what it's all about. Dr. Jesse exactly. Warner, can we that, can we call you Dr. Jesse for the show here for sure? Absolutely. Okay. All right, awesome. Um, part of the Street Soldiers family now. Dr. Jesse, how significant are these weight issues and body image issues, especially for women, especially for young women, adult women going through all stages of life? It's a, it's a tremendous issue. And while, you know, Jeanette pointed out some positives in social media, on the other hand, we're inundated with pictures that seem unattainable for many people, right? I, um, I'm a runner. I know that I am not going to look like or be as fast as the professional runners because I spend most of my day at work, right? Like I, you know, the, the challenge with social media is that it doesn't show all the hard work often that goes into getting to that place. And so we have these images that are often unattainable and um, can be really damaging. Um, to people both young um, and older, the recent research shows us that disordered eating is not a necessarily an issue just for the young anymore. It really goes across the lifespan. Wow. Um, Christine, you're a food scientist. We see a lot of things, as long as, as long as we're talking about social media here, we see a lot of things on social media. Drink this tea, eat this, follow this program. Here's the before, here's the after. We don't know if the after has been altered by an app or by some kind of uh, Photoshop. But what do you think about all of these messages that are coming out to people about do this routine, do that routine with food or follow this regimen. And this is the way to attain the body of your dreams. What, what are your thoughts on that as a scientist? My biggest thing is on education and allowing people to understand what their body is made of. And I think that there's a really big gap when it comes to women understanding body composition. So many of us have been ingrained that we need to weigh a certain amount to look good. And I've been really transparent on my YouTube channel, on my Instagram, telling people that like, it's not about the weight, it's about your body composition. And so many women get so stressed. I need to be back to this number. Maybe it was the number before they had a kid or the number when they graduated, when they got married, but instead, okay, what's your body fat percentage? muscle weighs more than like, you know, the, the density, let's focus on measurements, let's focus on how you feel. And I think providing this educational gap to see people, the science of it, to take away from all these nuances of things that just um, to tailor um, on what Jeanette was saying, that these, these images that just are not grounded on anything realistic. You know, I think it's so important that as social media influencers and, you know, having a voice out there that we're transparent with people that especially like for celebrities that they are, you know, being honest if they are having like cool spot, like oh this, like oh that, because the reality is, you know, you can only lose body fat at a certain rate and you can only do this at by being in a caloric deficit, there is no quick fix. It doesn't work. And I share with my followers, the fastest way to lose weight is slowly. And no one wants to hear that because you're going to damage your metabolism. You're going to damage your thyroid. You're going to make it harder for your body to lose weight naturally over time by doing all of these things. And learning how to do this sustainably is so important. So I think education is so crucial um, to narrowing that gap. We have much more coming up. Stay with us. Christine, I want to start with you on this. In terms of food, in terms of what we eat, there's some people that swear by a vegan diet and they're really upfront about telling you that. There's people that vegetarians, there's other people who I know, even you speak about within families, uh, who can eat a lot of meat, who can eat a lot of protein, and that's the way for them to go. Are there certain food principles that apply to everyone? The answer is yes, because all food is made up of macronutrients. Macronutrients are protein, carbs, and fat. So any food, anything is made up of one of those three things. So the thing is, whether you realize it or not, 
you're eating a certain amount of protein every day, a certain amount of carbs and a certain amount of fats. So if you're a vegan, it doesn't mean that you don't eat protein. It just means you're going to use plant-based proteins. If you're vegetarian, you would do eggs instead of meat. So the, the underlying principles are the fact that your body does require specific amounts of these macronutrients in certain quantities. The food choices you make to fit those macros, it's entirely up to you, your, you know, your ethical principles, your religious principles, your food intolerances. But I think that there is an underlying guideline that we all need certain amounts of these nutrients to function. Dr. Jesse, do you have patients coming to you who are like frustrated because they just don't know what to do? Yeah, and I talk a lot about behavior change and behavior change happens in small bits and we talk about SMART goals. Um, so things that are specific. Um, so uh, it's not that I want to be healthier. It's what does that mean? Does it mean that you're able to do more activity? Does it mean um, that you're eating certain foods, something that's measurable. Um, just saying again, want to be healthy. What does that mean? I can't measure that. Something that's attainable. So someone's not going to drop a tremendous amount of weight at one time that's relevant to your life and it's time-based. So I talk in two week or three week intervals. Um, if I set a goal for the next six months, that's really hard to keep going. So what can I do in the next couple of weeks to make change? Oh, that's a good idea. So a small interval of time so people can say, okay, for the next two weeks, I'm not going to eat late at night or I'm not going to eat, you know, whatever is the, the trigger for a certain food that they know is not good for them. Absolutely. For the next two weeks, I'm not going to buy snacks. When I go to the grocery store, I'm going to buy, I'm going to focus more on my meal times. That's a tremendous change, but it happens in small pieces. Jeanette, what about in, ter in terms of exercise? Because there have been a tremendous, I mean, we want to talk about what we see on social media. There's all kinds of ex exercise routines that people are doing, especially, you know, since the pandemic started, there's even more, I think, a huge influx. Are there certain things, because we see people that are like run, do endurance running, other people that are doing very heavy, heavy weight lifting and that type of thing. And then others that are like, okay, I just need to do yoga and some walking every day and I'm good. What, what are there certain principles throughout yes, your practice? And, and your principles when it comes to training. Okay. The first uh, straight out the gate is that every form of exercise has benefit to the body. So straight out, just moving the body can help you release endorphins so that you have a better, a better positive mental attitude and have that uh, endorphin, uh, hormonal endorphin high. But when it comes to fitness pr principles, the cardiovascular fitness, you have to be doing cardio for at least 20 minutes to have a benefit on the heart, which is the most important because heart disease is still the number one killer, taking out over 700,000 Americans every year. So the, it it, more people die from heart disease than from COVID, than from anything. Right. So number one is that everyone should be getting in that 20 minutes of cardio at least three to five times a week. That's to condition your heart. Then muscular strength work and muscular endurance so that your joints are strong so you can withstand the cardio so you can be strong enough to lift and carry things and to uh, like hip replacement is one of the biggest things that happens in the aging population. So you wanna have strong and flexible joints. So strength training in muscular endurance training and then flexibility work. So whether it's Pilates or yoga or stretching, the flexibility work will decrease your risk of having um, joint injuries and can also decrease the risk of pain, of pinching on nerves and, and just being able to increase your ability to be able to move and function and have a better quality of life. Um, Dr. Jesse, in terms of women, though, women, we have a lot of responsibilities. We are the ultimate multitaskers, as all of you have been pointing out. The uh, What about the pressure? Because I think also, too, a lot of times, women, we have a tendency to be harder on ourselves than anybody else. Yeah, absolutely. And it, we really talk in terms of our intrinsic motivation. So what are the motivations that come from within us? Is it that I want to feel a certain way or be able to do something Um you know, I may be calling upon my co-panelists when I start my marathon training again, right? Like that's my goal. Um, but, and not look at those extrinsic motivations. So it's not necessarily how other people look. It's not how fast they run. It's what you're looking for for yourself. Jeanette, do you have clients that come to you with, uh, you know, a screenshot and go, I want that body or I want those arms or I want those abs? 
<laughs> yes, of course. Like, like Dolly, of course. <laughs> No, people do that all the time. I mean, I don't think that there's anything wrong to, if an external motivation is, is something that motivates you, um, but you have to definitely, people have to get out of this comparison base uh, or that like they want something other than themselves. So again, my job is to always train people to understand their own genetic makeup and to be able to do the best they can with what they have and to be grateful for what they have. So like, it's a privilege to be able to move your body and to exercise. There's many people who have health disparities and health issues where they cannot do that. So I often try to number one, if someone is going down that negative black hole tunnels to bring them to a place of gratitude, like, okay, we need to make this list of, you know, you were able to give birth to your children. You uh, or have the strength to be able to do, you know, to perform great at your job. Like all of these things are incredible things that we need to be grateful for. When it comes to doing exercises to achieve specific uh, body, uh, look, the way like, certain look, yeah. abs like this and arms like this. Yes, you can you can put in the work, but when you put in the work, you also have to be loving and kind to your body and know that okay, this is the genetic package that I have. So I'm doing the best I can, and this is this is what uh this is what I have, and I'm gonna love it. Christina, in terms of in terms of our thoughts, is there any evidence that our thoughts actually affect how our bodies deal with our weight, processed food, our health? Absolutely, because stress is impacts your cortisol levels. And when your cortisol levels are, in, are elevated, it will directly impact your body's ability to regulate insulin. And I think a lot of people end up losing hope in the process because they, they give up, they, they see other people and they, they automatically disqualify themselves and think that like, I can't do that. And I think one of the biggest problems is people lack real world results of seeing people who were in their same boat and seeing how they transformed their body, which is why I think a lot of people want to go surgical routes. You know, I think that it's so inspiring, you know, showing transformation photos online of real people and us like myself as a, as a new a nutrition expert showing people, okay, this is how long it really took that person. This is what she right. was really eating she was really doing it because I think we need to give people, you know, more knowledge of what it's going to take to approach this in a natural way, because it can be done. I just think people lose hope in that process and want to approach quick fixes because they think that, you know, they're, they're not going to be able to do it. But the reality is there's a lot you can do. Definitely. Jeanette, what about you're in the, one of the surgery capitals of the, uh, of the world. What's your, what, no, what is your opinion on, what is your opinion on that? Well, I have a lot of opinions. <laughs> I've been working We're as listening. A, We're listening. We're listening. Yeah. So this is coming from a trainer with 30 years of experience. Okay? Oh my gosh. So, okay. Yeah, I'm 46. Wow. And okay. My opinions on this topic have changed dramatically over the years. Okay. Um, I'm not a fan of transformation pictures at all because I want people to accept that healthy living is a lifelong journey. So like we all get to be 21 once, that's cute and it's fun, but our genetics and our hormones and our bodies change throughout life. And we don't want you, I don't want people to adopt healthy lifestyle changes just to get from point A to point B. I want them to understand that these changes they make are going to affect their body their whole life. But guess what? Ladies, when you get into your 40s or maybe your late 40s, early 50s, you're going to go through menopause. You're going to go through hormonal changes. These things are completely normal and it's okay. Or, you know, it could certain things could happen to your body even at a younger age, like after having childbirth, your body's not going to be the same after having children as it was when you were like running around through college. So I want people to accept and love themselves. So I know when it comes to the self-talk, I don't even allow my clients one moment of negative self-talk. It's an absolute no. I want you to be your number one biggest fan all the time. And the biggest reason is uh, because it's so hard to be able to work on yourself if you're feeling these negative vibrations of constantly putting yourself down. You have to be able to lift yourself up.
Thanks for joining us for this episode of Street Soldiers on female fitness and body image. You can watch it again and share it on our Fox 5 NY YouTube page. Remember, use your mind as your best weapon. I'm Lisa Evers. Let's push for peace, love, and health justice for all. <laughs>